For today's look, I wanted to incorporate a pop of green because I don't normally ever wear green eyeshadows. I don't know why. I love the color green, especially the deep forest greens, which is what I use for today's look. So I wanted to go ahead and just incorporate that into my eye look for today. I definitely like how this all turned out. I think it looks really, really pretty. So if you guys want to how to do this look, keep on watching. If you want to get involved in the conversation, get involved down below. As you guys know here on my channel, I welcome everyone's opinions when it comes to topics like these, especially because I feel like this is something that we all deal with here on YouTube. I don't care if you are agreeable with me or not. I want to hear what you have to think and I just, I love talking to you guys. So comment whatever you guys want down below and let's get to talking. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys later. I love you guys. Enjoy. Bye. So I finally made it to the store and bought myself a brand new Real Techniques beauty sponge. This one is brand speaking new. Has not been used as you can see. I'm very excited about it. So all I'm doing right now is just moisturizing my face, doing the norm, and then I'm also going to use my Cover FX Illuminating Primer Base. So today's topic is going to be makeup brands taking advantage of influencers. I know this topic seems a little far-fetched just because you wouldn't really assume or think that companies would be capable of of things like what I'm gonna go over in this video but but when you look at certain aspects of these collaborations like the collaboration between Jaclyn Hill and Becca Cosmetics that was supposed to happen for the eyeshadow palette some things just don't seem right to me they don't seem professional on the brands end and there are just some things that I myself if I were in Jaclyn's position I know damn well I would not allow to happen without my consent so we'll go ahead and start with that one first because honestly that was the most notable failure we had from last year was that Jaclyn Hill and Becca a cosmetics collaboration palette. As always with these topics, I always encourage you guys to leave your opinions down below. You guys know I love talking to you guys and hearing your side of the story, what you guys think is happening. Hearing you guys' opinions honestly is so much fun and it creates good conversation, which I think, especially here in the beauty community, I feel like good conversation, good honest, clean conversation is very hard to come by. So it means a lot to me that you guys actually sit down and have conversations with each other, with myself also, and we just talk about things like this because it's actually very interesting if you think about it. I'm gonna use the Wet n Wild Press Powder in Warm Light in my Wet n Wild Complexion Brush. I'm gonna go ahead and just put this all over the face to kind of set everything evenly. And then you guys know I'm also gonna take my Wet n Wild Color Icon Single Eyeshadow in the shade Creme Brulee. I'm gonna go ahead and just set my lid. All right, so for today's look, I'm gonna use my Kat Von D Metal Matte Eyeshadow Palette. And the first shade I'm gonna go into is the shade Suede, which is right here, this really pretty like mid-tone tannish color with a fluffy brush, and that's gonna be our first transition shade. So before I get into this first part, I want to first just say that I know that not every release or collaboration from last year was a complete failure. We all know that Manny MUA had a successful release with Morphe. Uh, Kathleen Lights had a successful release with Morphe as well, as well as Colourpop. We saw a bunch of really good releases that went very, very well. So the reason why I'm making this video today and talking about this particular subject today is because I've seen an increase in people who believe that brands altogether should just do away with their PR or influencer program as a whole. So people who pretty much have no experience in cosmetology, makeup artistry, at least not professionally. These people who just put on makeup and know how to do it really well should just be put to the back burner and we should focus on working with actual makeup artists who are licensed, who have all the education that you would need to become a professional in the makeup artistry world. They want these brands to focus on those kind of people and I can kind of see why they would feel that way because honestly, if you think about it, they are more qualified obviously than their influencers are. Alright, so the next color I'm going to pick up is the shade Oak, which is right here, right next to that mid-tone tan color. This is a beautiful warm brown, and we're going to take that into the outside corner to start the deepening process. Alright, so here's my first question, and of course you guys are free to answer the question down below, or you can answer the poll I'm going to put up right around here. Do you think the outcomes of these two failed collaborations would have been different had these two ladies been professionally licensed makeup artists? Now, as we all know, Nikki Tutorials is actually a professionally licensed makeup artist. She did go to school for makeup artistry. I was going to try to use only the Kat Von D palette, but I think for my lid shade, since I want to make this a pop of green kind of look, I'm going to go into my Moon Dust palette from Urban Decay. I'm going to pick up the shade Lithium, which is this beautiful, almost like a deep olive greenish gold color. So creamy, so beautiful. And that's going to be, I think, our all over the lid shades. I'm going to go ahead and apply that right now. Now, the reason I'm using these two 
ladies as my example is because they are, of course, as you guys know, two of the most popular influencers or people here on YouTube who are involved in the beauty community, and I feel like these two are the perfect examples of what I wanted to discuss in this video. Now, now before I get into this next part, I want to first just clarify a couple things about Jaclyn Hill because there seems to be some confusion about where she stands as a professional makeup artist. Jaclyn Hill has never attended an actual school for cosmetology and or makeup artistry. She's only ever worked behind a Mac counter and that was only for a couple of years. I think people get confused because they hear that she had worked at Mac and had taken a Mac crash course on how to use Mac products. Now this is worlds different from an actual classroom setting at an actual cosmetology school where you learn the application of makeup, how to take off makeup properly, what makeup to use on different skin types, the composition of makeup. You learn safety procedures in the classroom. You learn about the MSDS sheets. Like there are so much that you learn in an actual cosmetology class that you do not learn at the MAC crash course classes. Now if you're interested in those classes at MAC, I will link everything down below for you guys. They generally last around like 90 minutes and they can cost upwards of like $110, but you do leave with the products they use on your face so you can bring it home and do it again on yourself. I also want to clarify that at these crash courses, it is a one-on-one -on -one thing, so they really want to make sure that you do learn everything that you need to learn about using their product. And that's the biggest difference is that when you go to cosmetology school, you learn about every product, about every brand pretty much, at least at mine you did. We learned about what brands are owned by what companies. You'd be surprised at how many brands are actually not their own brand. They're actually owned by bigger brands like Estee Lauder owns so many companies that we all know and love here on YouTube. You don't learn how to use other products from other companies. Now I know the general thought is, okay, well, if I learn how to use an eyeliner at the MAC course, then I can go out and buy an eyeliner from any company and apply it and it'll look the exact same way. That is obviously a very very, very, very different idea from what actually happens when you go out and use a different product. Yes, you can learn how to use eyeliner, eyeshadow, lippies, uh, blush, bronzer, highlight, whatever you want to learn at that MAC crash course, but every single product you get from the drugstore to Sephora to Ulta and beyond that in the more like higher end brands you see at the mall, everything works differently and everything has different results. So they don't teach you how to use like obviously other brands products. MAC is one of those companies that like Victoria's Secret, if they're going to teach you how to use a product, it's going to be their product. You come back to them and keep buying their product because that product is the only product you know how to use. This, of course, is the same issue I had working at Victoria's Secret. A lot of girls would come in, I need to be sized, can you figure out what size I am in the bras? And the first thing they tell you at Victoria's Secret when you do sign on to become a Victoria's Secret angel is that the sizes that we give you, the ones that we give you when we do the measuring tape and everything, that size is normally, generally only for our bras and stuff like that. So we don't size you for a general sizing. We size you for the bras that you would fit in in our store, which was the biggest complaint among customers that I had to deal with at Victoria's Secret when I worked there. All right, guys, so for the pop of green, I'm going to pick up this beautiful forged green right here in the shade Moss. I'm going to take that on a very, very flat, precise eyeshadow brush, and I'm going to just gently put that along that bottom lash line. Now, if I were lucky enough to be like, say, Jacqueline or Nikki, and a brand came up to me and asked me if I wanted to do a product in collaboration with them, if I were either of them, knowing that, especially on Nikki's end, that she's a professional and she knows how much work and how much time needs to be dedicated to creating a makeup product, I would make sure that I was a part of every single part of creating that product when it comes down to even the scent, what shades are in it. If you're to approach me and ask me to do something with you, I want to be there for every decision because obviously, hi, my name is going to be on that product and if that product turns out to be complete shit, I don't want any part of it, you know what I mean? Like that to me is the biggest thing I think that both girls kind of failed at when it came to these products being released, well at least on Nikki's end it did, but they were both admittedly not as hands-on with the product as they claimed to have been when this whole thing initially went down. Another thing a lot of people are bringing up is the fact that these influencers at any given point in time can have anywhere between like three projects to upwards of at least 10 different projects in the work with different companies at all at one time. Now, as you can imagine, that can make it very hard to focus on any one project, thus creating the idea that they're not really making sure that these products that are being released are going to be in the best of quality. 
And I know these collaborations are with brands that we all know and love, that we all swear by in all our monthly favorites videos, but at the end of the day, it's a business. I don't know how these collaboration things work. I don't exactly know how much power these influencers have over what happens to the product. And I do know, like I said, that these are brands that people actually swear by. And so they expect that the brand, no matter who they're working with, that the brand's going to come through and make sure that every single product they create and put out, no matter who it's in collaboration with, it's going to be of the utmost quality. Now that was not the case for both Nikki and Jacqueline unfortunately and we learned that they learned that actually we all learned it the hard way. Let me just put things into perspective for you guys. So say that I'm a brand owner and I wanted to reach out to one of you guys to represent my company in a future collaboration palette. I tell you that you get to choose every single color in the palette. You get to name the palette and you also get to name each of the shades in the palette. The only thing I'm responsible for is obviously the actual shades themselves as far as the formulation goes. But everything else is up to you, down to the packaging of the palette itself. Knowing that I gave you all of this power over this palette, over this product as a whole, I could not, for the life of me, move forward without any consultation from you whatsoever when it came down to maybe any problems that would arise during the production of the palette, you would be the first person I would have on speed dial like, hey, this is what's going on. I want to know what you want to do. If you want to move forward, if you don't want to move forward, what do you want to do? The fact that some of these brands don't do that for these influencers is kind of bullshit. And that's exactly what happened between Becca and Jacqueline. I'm going to put some color back into my face. This is the NYC bronzer in the shade Sunny. Initially, when Jacqueline had first first introduced the palette to her community on YouTube, she said that she was fully involved in the production of every aspect of this palette. Now when things didn't go the way they thought they were going to go, she quickly backpedaled and said, I wasn't as involved as I thought I was going to be, I don't know what happened, I was assured that they were going to use the same factory when producing this palette. Things changed very quickly from where they were to where they actually were when it came down to the truth of what happened to this palette. This is a perfect example of why I feel these influencers should really just calm themselves and keep themselves focused on one project at a time because this is a clear cut example of a brand kind of just sneaking past somebody they're working with just to make sure they can keep up with numbers. And while I understand they were only trying to outsource because they wanted to make sure they had enough product for everyone and wanted a palette, it wasn't the right thing to do because as far as Jacqueline's concerned, as far as she says, she was not told about any outsourcing of the palette and the only time she was told about it was after the fact that it had happened and she had received a product that was actually complete shit. If I'm going to put my name on anything, I don't care if it's an eyeliner, I don't care if it's a nail polish, an eyeshadow, a highlighter, a foundation, I don't give a shit if it's just a freaking beauty sponge. If I'm going to put my name on this product, I want to make sure this product is going to be of the highest quality that money can buy for my subscribers and followers. That may be a little bit too much for brands to handle. I know some brands sometimes don't like to have these influencers get too involved just because they are not professionals, but at the same time, it comes down to the precedent of the situation. You know what I mean? Like, if I'm gonna ask you to do something with me, I want you to be involved with it 100%. Now, going back to that Jaclyn Hill palette, she said in her Snapchat when she was trying to do damage control that she was only responsible for one of the shades in the palette. Everything else was only on Becca, which to me, is kind of bullshit to kind of throw Becca under the bus because this is a palette in collaboration with you. You know what I mean? Like, you helped them create this palette. You said in that initial video that you were hands-on with the palette, that you helped them choose every shade, and then when shit hit the fan, you backpedaled pretty quickly. So to me, when it comes to damage control, you pretty much did a very big, bad job. Let's just be honest. Now, obviously, the release of that palette was pretty bad. People were very pissed off that the quality of the palette was nowhere near what they were used to when it comes to the Becca name and the astronomically large price tag that some of their products actually come with. Refunds were issued, the palette was pulled off the shelves immediately, and we have not heard a thing since. Until recently, I think it was on Twitter, I think it was, or Instagram actually, Becca or Trend Mood One actually had released a sneak peek of the Prosecco Pop highlighter that Becca's actually planning on releasing as a single. Now, this is controversial because Jaclyn Hill created the Prosecco Pop highlighter in collaboration with Becca when she released her face highlighter palette and she had no idea that they were bringing it back. They didn't tell her shit and that's her product, which I think is pretty bullshit because obviously that's Jacqueline's product. She's the one who put it out on her palette and things like that. So for them to do that behind her back is kind of sketchy. So yeah.
Now, on the other end of the spectrum, we've got Nikki Tutorial's and Too Faced collaboration palette, which is the Power of Makeup palette. And this, in my opinion, is the best example of why I don't think it really matters whether or not a brand works with a professional or an influencer who isn't licensed. It doesn't make a difference, honestly, because to me, it honestly depends on the person and how money-hungry that person is. So let's get into that. Now, as far as Nikki's release, this was a tad bit different just because, like I said in the beginning of the video, she is a licensed makeup artist. She's gone to school for makeup artistry. She knows the processes, how to make products, how not to make products, what to use in different products, what makes a product a product. So she knows the behind the scenes ordeal of how to create a product. So why this product went out to be so bad, I have no idea. I'm going to go ahead and quickly highlight my inner corners and the brow bone. So I'm using the ColourPop Single Eyeshadow in the shade of Valley Girl. So as we all know, this palette was of course released to the influencers first on YouTube. An abundance of videos went up, including the one from Tati's, which I think we all know about by now. Some people did live swatches, some people did not. And it was kind of disconcerting because most, if not all, of the first impressions videos, apart from maybe like one or two, which were of course from her closest friend were all very very negative and the one video that stood out among the rest was the one from Tati now I know like I said I've talked about this a thousand times on my channel but if you have not seen this first impression video I implore you to please go and watch it before you watch the rest of this video if you already watch it then you know the train wreck that was that video it was probably the best example of influencers really not giving a fuck about quality of the product as long as they get paid Tati was trying so hard, so incredibly hard to make those eyeshadows and those highlighters and those blushes out to look like they were outstanding in quality, but the eyeshadows and the quality and the pigmentation were working against what she was saying and it was really, really bad. Of all of the bad first impressions videos I've ever had the pleasure of watching, this definitely takes the cake for the cringiest, most uncomfortable video I've ever watched and I've watched some very messed up bullshit. You could tell that she she was literally trying to force feed you guys this palette and trying so hard to sell the shit out of it just so she got that cash money because most of these influencers, believe it or not, are affiliates with these brands and for every good review they give, they do get obviously bonus. I mean, if I'm being completely honest, I don't think I've ever watched someone work that hard to make an eyeshadow look good when it just wasn't gonna happen, but she did. She was working the shit out of those eyeshadows and she was gonna be damned if those eyeshadows did not look good to you guys even though they were complete shit. The number one thing people kind of red flagged was the fact that in Nikki's video, of all the videos that were uploaded, in Nikki's video, the one who's in collaboration with Too Faced for this palette, in her video she did zero life swatches and zero brush swatches. Now that brings up one of two different possibilities. A, she didn't do life swatches knowing the product was shit, or the product was actually of good quality and everyone else just got all duds, which to me, since more than half of the first impression and reviews of those palettes were all negative, I'm gonna have to say that's not the case. Since B doesn't seem like the likely answer, I'm gonna go ahead and just assume it's A, which was she knew it was shit quality, which is why she didn't do life swatches. It probably took her a while and a lot of primer to get those swatches to look that good on her arm, because you do see swatches of the eyeshadows, but you don't see her live swatching them, and that's obviously gotta be for one reason and one reason only. The eyeshadows weren't good, period. Which brings me to my concluding point here for this video. It really does not make a difference if a company chooses to work with an influencer, someone who has no educational background in makeup artistry, or an actual makeup artist, someone who has gone to school for X amount of years to get their license. It only depends on the kind of person they're in collaboration with and how far that brand is willing to let this person go to make sure that the standards are up to their standards. On Jacqueline's end, she claims that she was not given as much power over the product as she wished she would have gotten. On Jacqueline's end, we see somebody who is an influencer who does know a lot about makeup. I'm not sitting here trying to demean Jacqueline in any way, shape, or form. She is an extraordinarily talented makeup artist, obviously. Baby girl might know how to blend every single eyeshadow known to mankind and still make it look really, really good on her face, and she's damn good at doing just that. But when it comes to it, she's not a professional. She's not licensed. She has no idea what's going on, which brings in Nikki, who is the other end of the spectrum, who is a professional, who is licensed, who is educated in makeup artistry professionally. 
If you ask me who I think handled the situation better when it came down to the failed palettes, I'm gonna say Jacqueline. She was a lot more professional, she knew exactly what she was talking about, and she knew how to approach it. How someone like Nikki, who is an educated makeup artist, a licensed makeup artist, could feel good about going through with the release of a product that was shit in quality, I have no idea. But that also just proves the point that most of these influencers or these makeup artists are only doing this because of the money. I'm pretty sure Nikki made upwards of close to a million dollars on her videos on her channel every single year on top of all the collaboration she does with all these different companies so to her it's like okay well if it's not the best quality why does it matter i'm still gonna get paid you know what i mean like that's how i see it i got so heated that i forgot i'm supposed to be doing a tutorial for you guys i'm sorry i'm gonna pick up the shade stone which is right here it's a very very dark almost like forest green and i'm gonna tuck that into the very outside corner to further darken out that outside corner like to me it just seems like all of these influencers are only doing what they're doing because of the money and granted not every single influencer is like that but the majority of them are in the midst of all this drama i forgot to highlight a little bit so i'm gonna pick up my Ofra highlighter in beverly hills and we're gonna go ahead and just apply that if you go to nikki tutorials channel and you scroll down to her comment section in some of our videos you will see so many comments from people who are subscribed to her from in some cases the beginning of her very channel that she's on right now who call her a sellout who say that she's changed she's different and her her subscribers are noticing it. They're seeing that she's definitely changing. She's a lot different than what she used to. Now, I can't say that's a definite change that I'd see in her. I've never watched her channel outside of maybe one or two videos. So I can't tell you if I feel that she's changed, but I can see why they think she has. So what do you guys think? As the consumers, as the subscribers, as the followers, as the viewers, what do you guys think? Would it make a difference to you if a brand did away with the influencer program and actually started to work with actual licensed makeup artist or do you think it doesn't make a difference like to me I don't think it makes a difference if a brand works with a influencer or an actual makeup artist because it depends on the person who they're working with and on the brand itself as to whether or not a collaboration goes well or does well you know what I mean if there was any advice I could give to future influencers the number one thing I would tell you right now because it's the one thing that I think is that is becoming a problem here on YouTube is to stay humble stay grounded and realize that the only reason that you're getting big if you get a lot of subscribers really quickly. Only a reason you're getting all these amazing deals and all these amazing trips is because of the viewers, the people who sit and watch your content, who share your content, who comment on your content, who support you daily. They are the reason why you are where you are. And when you start to let that fame get to your head and your ego gets big, it becomes obvious and people will start to turn away from you as Patrick Starr has started to see and now Nikki Tutorials as well. I'm sorry the angle is so different but my camera was actually dying so it's on the charger right now but I want to quickly just finish off that little advice column for you future influencers. Don't overbook yourself. Be sure to give each and every product your undivided attention and make sure that that product, because it's going to have your name on it, is going to be of the utmost quality, the best quality for your subscribers and your viewers. Once again, yes, the money is going to be incredible and I can understand why people get so excited about it, but remember without your subscribers, you would not be shit. And above everything else please stay honest because honesty is such a rare quality to find here on YouTube especially in the beauty community just because a lot of these brands will pay these influencers X amount of dollars for a positive review even if the product isn't that good so it's very hard to find a actual honest person when it comes to beauty product and I feel like that's the one thing that would definitely set people apart from everyone else is true blunt honesty because I know myself as the consumer when I log on to YouTube or if I log on to Instagram, I log on and look for these reviews from people who I know are honest. And there's only two people that I honestly really trust from the bigger YouTubers at least. And that's Nicole Guerrero and Kathleen Lights. But I mean, that can be different for everybody else. Some people might not like those two. But for me, those are the two girls that I trust above anybody else when it comes to the bigger influencers. So with that being said, guys, let me know what you think down below. I love you guys so much. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. I will see you guys in the next video. Love you.